Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. When Wild Kingdom aired in the 1960s and 70s, many episodes documented wildlife research efforts. Marlon and Jim accompanied scientists all over the world to observe animals in their natural behaviors. Some of the techniques you'll see in tonight's episodes are no longer necessary by today's standards, but the work is still just as important. Wild Kingdom took viewers to the far corners of the world and cultivated an appreciation for animals and their habitats. Marlon and Jim showed us the importance of preserving the natural world, not just for animals, but for our quality of life. And that's good news for all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. This little fellow, in case you didn't know, is a koala, the animal after which the first teddy bears were patterned. Though he's often called the koala bear, he's not a bear at all, but a marsupial mammal of the eucalyptus forests of Australia. The towering eucalyptus are commonly known as gum trees, and there are more than 500 species of them in this section of the Down Under continent. These forests provide an excellent habitat for an abundance of wild creatures. The koala, however, is the only one who spends his entire life there. He has to, since the only food he ever eats is the foliage of gum trees, eucalyptus leaves. As a permanent resident here, he sees many animals come and go among which are some of the strangest creatures in the world. There are mammals which lay eggs and others which bounce along on two legs. Here he sees birds that never fly and mammals which do, in a way. Life is never dull for the koala, as is quite evident, by the experiences he has during a day in the gum tree forest. Mm -hmm. When the morning is still young in the gum tree forest of Australia, the trees become suddenly alive with life and color. Garrulous birds of the parrot family cluster together, bright and alert for the day ahead. Rainbow lorikeets show off their plumage, iridescent in the early sunlight. They are joined by a less colorful relative, the scaly lorikeet and nearby some cockatoos. The gala is found commonly all over Australia. Such is not the case with the somewhat larger sulfur-crested cockatoo. This bird likes the gum forest and avoids the barren inland districts. A koala eats his breakfast of eucalyptus leaves. He's the chief spectator of what occurs in the gum tree forest. And today, as usual, he'll move about slowly from tree to tree, getting food and moisture from the foliage while observing what's happening around and below. Placid by nature, he usually watches the daily struggles of other forest creatures in a very detached manner, rarely becoming involved or upset. However, the very young are not always so calm, and this little fellow obviously craves the reassurance of his mother. All is not tranquil among the koalas, however. These animals sometimes have squabbles over rights to a particular tree. Just a short distance away, an adult male has encroached upon a tree claimed by another. The intruder is quickly aware that his presence is unwanted. Since 
chance a fall from such a height could well be fatal, the intruder shows his submission by seeming to lose his balance and falling to hang beneath the disputed branch. Having asserted his dominance, the victor gives a triumphant call, renewing his claim of territorial rights. Soon the intruder will meekly descend and find another tree of his own. The koalas often sit and observe the constant procession of creatures and incidents which enliven the gum tree forest. The curiosity of this koala mother is reflected in the young one who has emerged from her pouch. He decides to climb to the top of his mother's back where the view will be better. While he's thus occupied, it's the mother who spies the first activity below. A small mob of kangaroos feeding on grasses in a rock-strewn clearing of the woods. Two of the youngsters, called Joys, forget about everything except their favorite play, sham battle. A kangaroo mob such as this one is always under the watchful eye of a muscular male known as the mob boss, who keeps keenly alert for danger. They are animals who prefer flight to fight, but if necessary, a foe will be grasped in the kangaroo's forearms while the sharp clawed hind feet kick and slash dreadfully. The kangaroo is another of the marsupials, and the joys, only one inch long at birth, continue to take refuge in the mother's pouch until quite large. Like most baby animals, the joys enjoy playing, especially sparring with one another. They're usually close to an alert adult who keeps a watchful eye for approaching outsiders. It's another koala and her youngster. As usual, the joy decides to take a closer look. The timidity of the koala prevails, and she determines to observe the kangaroos from elsewhere. Kangaroo activities will not disturb her in a tree. The young kangaroos are always curious especially when they spy a creature such as this emu, which weighs over 100 pounds and stands nearly six feet tall. The emu and one of her chicks very pointedly ignore the joy. He is bewildered as the big bird and her following chicks pass. But when they return directly at him, the joy's curiosity evaporates, and he hastens to the safest haven he knows. Life in the gum tree forest is not only in the trees. There is activity in the air above and on the ground below. It seems there is always something doing as our koala continues to observe. The day's activities are now at their peak in the gum tree forest. And the koala moves to a better vantage point in order to get a clearer view of some airborne visitors a flock of Cape Barren geese. Even as he watches, they swoop down for a landing. The geese have landed not far from the kangaroos, only occasionally interrupting their feeding to raise their heads. 
it is not so much to eat that the geese have come as it is for water. They walk toward a nearby stream, unaware of the koala above, who watches as they approach another waterfowl, quite familiar to this area, the black swan. Using its broad foot as a rudder, the swan moves smoothly, watching the newcomers who quickly finish their business here. The swan's renewed solitude is only temporary. Things are seldom quiet for very long during the daylight hours in the gum tree forest. Some distance from the water, emerging from its burrow, is a duck-billed platypus. Another marsupial, the platypus has a broad bill like a duck's in appearance, but very soft and pliable. It also lays eggs the same as the nearby swan does, but with soft shells and no bigger than a sparrow's. Its strange eyelids come up from the bottom closing off both eyes and ears for underwater swimming. Now the platypus must rely on his sensitive beak to find crustaceans, small fish, worms, and insect larvae by touch. The swan watches the strange antics of this beaver-tailed, web-footed oddity, who can, if he wishes, remain submerged for up to five minutes. The platypus is abruptly disturbed and ceases his feeding. Some dingoes are passing by. These cunning wild dogs will attack almost any animal their size or smaller. An echidna, who might be their next prey, has heard the dingoes coming, and a new forest drama begins to unfold as the dingoes pick up the echidna's trail. The situation is really not as bad for the echidna as it looks. Those spines are extremely sharp and don't come out like a porcupine's. Biting him will be like trying to bite an inverted pincushion. Having dug in slightly, the echidna has hidden its vulnerable underside and poses a problem even for a predator so strong. The echidna, also called the spiny anteater, is yet another of Australia's marsupials. And like the platypus, it too has no teeth and lays eggs. A kookaburra seems amused by their efforts. Hearing the cry, a koala pauses to see what's happening. an intriguing sight for the koala above them. His hunger has gotten the best of him, and as if possessed, the dingo presses his attack ignoring the sharp spines as much as possible. But it's no easy job. <coughs> the stubborn dingo's efforts are futile and very painful.
His efforts continue in vain, even though the dingo finally manages to tumble the big rock away from his quarry. The kookaburra is entranced by it all. But now the action ends. The wild dogs dislike giving up on such seemingly easy prey, but this is one time when their persistence is fruitless. The sun is high, and so now the koala, a spectator to the end, prepares to resume her munching of eucalyptus leaves. Though he clearly preferred solitude, the koala had the company of many other creatures who could climb the tall gum trees as well as he. So he always kept a wary eye on the ground. In mid-afternoon, two koalas amuse themselves. But it's not long before they are interrupted by a fluffy, pink-nosed marsupial known as the golden bush-tailed possum and a native cat. Both are predators. And the koalas sense that a fight is in the offing. The possum, who has very poor eyesight, is not afraid of the native cat. Both combatants, it seems, have poor vision. And how can you fight when you can't see your enemy? And so, as the koala watches, the squabble ends as abruptly as it began. The native cat wants only peace. But the possum is in a decidedly belligerent mood this afternoon and spoiling for more fight. He sets out after dangerous game, a big sea eagle. Normally more than a match for a creature such as this pugnacious possum, the eagle is in the midst of its molt and unwilling to fly. Already so many feathers have been lost that flight is badly impaired. Staying out of reach may be the wisest course. On the ground, the eagle would not hesitate to pounce on this aggressor. But here, if they locked in combat, a fall would be inevitable. And that could be fatal to one or both. aggravation of the possum becomes too much, and departure amid flying feathers is the only course left to the eagle. Using his prehensile tail as an aid, the possum descends, watched by another forest creature who is decidedly formidable. Satisfied with his victory, the possum wants no fight with this big monitor lizard, the goanna. Both animals seem willing to forego an encounter which might be painful at best. The goanna, a destroyer of birds' eggs, is intent upon investigating a nest he spotted far up this tree. A nest which happens to belong to a pair of pied butcher birds. These birds are courageous defenders against even such large reptilian intruders. Head bleeding, the goanna refuses to retreat under their onslaught. And when the birds seem to give up, continues his search for eggs.
But now, as the goanna nears a natural crevice at the treetop, the scent of something new distracts him from the butcher birds, who still watch anxiously. The lizard senses something in the cavity of the gum tree, and as the birds watch, a startled flying phalanger emerges. Though resembling the American flying squirrel, this creature is actually another of the marsupials. As many as 20 of them may inhabit the same tree. And from under the very nose of the goanna, a second one pops out of the cavity. And a third. The appearance of the phalangers intensifies the butcher bird's anger at such disturbance near their nest. Another attack seems justified, and this time against the flying phalangers. Under such concerted attack, the phalanger has no choice but to launch himself and glide to the ground. A second phalanger suffers their onslaught. He seems unwilling to jump, and so the decision is made for him. For the observing koalas, the events of this day will be repeated many times. But now, with evening approaching, it is time to seek out the tastiest eucalyptus leaves of the gum tree forest. The gum tree forest is a vital segment of our natural world. It is the home of numerous remarkable creatures that are strangely different from animals found anywhere else on Earth. Some of them we have seen, but there are many others. All of them depend largely or wholly for survival upon the great eucalyptus forest of Australia. That they are there makes this forest one of the most intriguing places in the world. Conservation of such odd wildlife in a relatively isolated area is highly important. This is why, as with other primitive areas around the globe, the gum tree forest must be carefully preserved. Its inhabitants are unique examples of the wonder to be found in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.